Well, here we are in Wavell Heights, which is located about nine kilometres north of the Brisbane CBD. The house we're about to show you is part of a small two-house development which replaces an old post-war home. We meet the friendly owners, Brad and Natasha. What are we going to see today? I've always wanted to have a skyline view. Yep. So when you get upstairs, we've got the most awesome view of the Brisbane skyline. We're also going to show you our eclectic industrial style kitchen. And you'll also see a treasure trove of recycled material that we've got both from around Brisbane, from demolition yards, yep. but also into interstate as well. Well, it sounds amazing. Well, come on, Gary, let's go and take a look. After you. Well, I met Brad and Natasha back in 2012 and they had just purchased this block of land. Um, it had an old house on it that they were wanting to knock down to develop the site. I wasn't wanting to go down the um, standard small lot house design. I was wanting to put the two best houses on the street on the site. So okay, so here we are, top level, magnificent view. I mean, Brad, you were right about the views. Big thing was New Year's, fireworks, friends over, Beers, drinks, food, awesome. Now, what's going on with this whole industrial thing? You guys obviously have got style, and um, obviously that industrial thing's part of that. So how, how did that come about? I guess it's a mix of our personalities. We both um, are very creative people, and we just like the raw, natural feel of the industrial yep. era. And the other good thing about industrial, it doesn't need to look perfect. Yep. It can be look a little bit rough on the edge, which both we are, so <laughs> it fits in with our personalities as well. With this house, they were wanting to go ultra modern, um, which I was really happy about because it's hard to find clients who are brave and they really gave me a lot of free reign. The home is entered via the rumpus room or the cave as it's often referred to. It overlooks the pool, the mid-level houses all the bedrooms. The upper level is where most of the living happens. Included here is the kitchen and the rooftop deck, from which the city views can be appreciated. The entertainment room sits above the garage at the front of the home. The front pod is a great little spot there, and that's going to be like a nightclub, isn't it? Well, <laughs> well test. It's the doghouse, yeah. actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So when I'm creeping home at 2am in the morning, instead of having to creep into the main bed, I can just creep upstairs into and actually the into the pod. That's a great place to entertain, though. I mean, it has a view as well. Yes. Um, it's got its own little bar. Yes. And a great place to have parties and stuff. And right next to the pool. Yes, absolutely. It can also be used as an office or a granny flat um, or when we have extended family come and stay and we want to move them somewhere. Because we know with parents, sometimes they they stay, overstay their welcome. Yep. Instead of telling them to go home, we can just move them to the pod. They are listening to this, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I said it. <laughs> the light fitting over the staircase is absolutely fantastic. So when it comes to choosing lights, who, how do you choose that? How, how does it work? So whoever's lighting. first into the lighting store, <laughs> okay. I guess. In essence, Tash picked the lights that we've got over the um, bench top. However, what we call is our spider light over there, over the sort of staircase, because that's my little baby. Yeah. So I sort of got to choose that one. I don't know if Tash was that happy about it, but it's definitely a talking point when friends and family come yeah. over. When you come in, I really love the industrial nature. It hits you straight away when you see those recycled bricks. Whose idea was that? That was actually Jamin's idea, and we've played along with that a little bit more, sourced the bricks. Um, as I say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. 10% of the bricks are graffiti. It really sets it off and it really adds to the warehouse feel. You're looking now at the negative or the skeleton of a, a patterned screen. The, the positive was actually part of the Australian motor industry and has already gone into a motor car. So we're now taking this, had one use, this is its second use, and now we're taking it into a third use by repurposing it as a screen and isn't it fantastic? The thing about using repurposed materials is your home instantly has character, it instantly has a story. Whereas sometimes new materials kind of, you're kind of creating your own story. And I love what you've done here with, um, there's signs, there's the mobile sign in the bedroom, yes. there's signs here and, and, and there, and, uh, and the recycled materials just gives it character and a story straight away. All right guys, well you did a fantastic job. I love the house, it's so warm and welcoming. So now, what did it cost? Gary, we haven't done our final figures yet, uh, but it sits between $500,000 and $520,000. Okay, fantastic values. Well, thank you for showing me around. I had a great time. Thank you, Brad. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Tash.